are going to one of the most remote island destinations in the world. It's the Faroe Islands and they are in the middle of the North Atlantic. They're sort of halfway between Scotland and Iceland and part of Denmark. And I'm speaking to Oda Andreasson who runs the tour company Go Local. The Faroes are remote, but Oda has chosen to live on the most remote island in the Faroes, in its Michiness. Oda, hello. Welcome to Tell Me Where to Go. Thank you. When I look at the map of the Faroes, Michiness is the furthest west inhabited island in the Faroes. Is that correct? Yes. We are the westernmost point of the Faroe Islands is the lighthouse in the Michnesholm, which is on our island. We are so westerly that the Greenwich Mean Time timeline goes straight to this island, actually. So we kind of have two time zones on this island. But no worry, your clock won't change when you cross the time zone here. You don't have a big population. I think you've only got a population, less than 100 people live there. Is that correct? Yeah, we have 16 registered, but we are actually only 11 people on the island this time of year. (laughs) When you say this time of the year, does that mean that in the warmer months, do you get other people from other islands come and holiday on Michiness? Is that how it works? Yeah, we have about 45, 50 houses on the island. Most of them are owned by people who have relatives from the island and are used as summer houses. So out of these 45 houses, only eight are inhabited all year round. When the boat operates every day from May till August, we will see more people here. But yeah, you can say in the municipality and registered with their addresses here, we are 16. But in winter, we are only 11. We have three farmers. We are actually just three people under senior citizen age here. So yeah, I think the average age is 75 or something on the island. Gosh, do you have a shop or a pub to cater for the 16 people? Well, we do have a pub, believe it or not. But uh, then at uh, this time of year, I don't think there are so many guests coming to the pub. But we have a pub called uh, The Locals on Michness. It's a restaurant and cafe and a pub in the evening. And she will be open in weekends when people are here. Sometimes we see a lot of people in weekends. But we don't have a grocery shop. So it's like the old days. I pick up the phone and I phone the shop in Muawur on Wagar Island, the closest. And they bring groceries to the harbour every Wednesday in summertime when the boat operates. And here in winter, I get it by hand helicopter every Friday. You are the first person that I've ever spoken to that gets their groceries delivered by helicopter. That is absolutely fantastic. (laughs) But also I'm happy we have these farmers because I buy my eggs from the farmer and lamb and so we get a lot of local food here too which is wonderful and very tasty but uh, You know, I had to learn how to bake because you don't get, you can't have a bread for a week. So we bake and we make a lot homemade here. So are you a local girl? Were you born there or did you come from another island? No, I'm not a local here. Actually, uh, my ancestors come from Wagar Island, my grandmother and my father's family from Suwuro in the south. The reason I ended up here is kind of a funny story. I studied tourism in the 90s. I was actually a trainee at the Visit for Islands. And when I wrote my thesis in January 1997, the thesis was about sustainable tourism on Michinus Island, which is where I am now. So this was 24 years ago. So I took helicopter to this island in January and interviewed the 16 inhabitants here. And ever since I've been following the island and I really fell for the island. I love this island and I felt like I had a calling to come here and and show people that it is possible to make sustainable tourism and it's very important to preserve this island and the bird life here. Being the sort of island you are with only 16 people in the permanent population, there would be no pollution there. There would be no heavy industry or anything. And I do know that it is quite windy there. I do know that it can be quite crisp and cool, the temperature. So I guess it is probably an idyllic place to use as somewhere that does have a sustainable environment. Yeah, because we are so isolated and because we are so westernly, it's it's very authentic, this island. It is also the oldest island along with uh, Suwuroi. The island is 60 million years old, volcanic islands. So you see a lot of very interesting geology here. But we are also the island with the richest bird life population in the Faroe Islands. And 
we have the biggest puffin colony in the Faroe Islands here. And the biggest seabird we have, the gannets, they only nest on this island. So it's a paradise for bird watchers. It is also a Ramsar island. And I don't know to explain what Ramsar is. It's, it's a bird life protection program, kind of UNESCO for bird life. And we are the Ramsar island because we have the biggest puffin colony in the Faroe Islands here. So we take very good care that no rats come to the island and so on to protect the bird life. And we have a good chance of doing this because we are so isolated. Very no. important. No, no rats. rats. <laughs> They take out all the birds. So if we were to yeah. have just one rat there, they would ruin the, the bird colonies. Yeah. So it's yeah. a great haven for birds. And the puffins. Now, I have never seen a puffin in real life. I mean, they're very attractive birds, but they're also very comical. Do they have their own personalities, do you think? I actually came here in January 19. I moved here. And you study them a lot. And they are very cute and very clumsy. You know, they have these short wings. So when they land, they sometimes just fall. And it's, it's quite funny to see. I see them, you know, making their mating game kissing. But I also have videos of them fighting. So they're, they're really, really charming birds. Sorry to say, but in the old days, we were very dependent on this island on um, eating the puffins. Since they've been climbed in number, this island was the first in the Faroes to protect the puffins. So they have been protected here since 2012 which I'm very proud of. So we don't hunt them anymore. And now they're just for people to come and enjoy and, and see how they are. I know that you have some very, very steep cliffs uh, virtually around most of the island. So that must mean that when you take people there out sightseeing, you must get some absolutely stunning views from just about anywhere on the island, do you? Yeah, that is correct. We do. Even if you're scared of heights, you can come to the island to see the puffins because like this summer, they were everywhere, almost in the village. They're down at the harbour. When you enter the harbour, there's a gorge with a boat. And from you can see it starts sailing first uh, from Easter. There'll be a concert of Kitty Wakes singing in the gorge and you will see the puffins already there most days. There are steep areas, but I think I cured many for fright of heights because they're so eager to see the puffins that they will hike with me anyway. Tell us about the lighthouse there because I've seen photos of it and it, you must be on a windy island because it is the only lighthouse in the world that I have seen that's actually tied to the ground with cables. That is correct. It is very, very windy there. And uh, you can say in, in winter time, we only hike there sometimes to see to the sheep, the farmers. And the lighthouse was opened in 1909 and people lived there back then. We actually had three families living by the lighthouse and they had uh, the famous Michness Oxus there as well. In the 90s, it was automized. So now nobody has to live there. There was this lighthouse, the last one who worked there. He, it must be very lonely, you can <laughs> imagine living. There's one house by the lighthouse and people asked him, how is it being there so lonely? And he said, well... As long as I talk to myself, I'm okay. But when I start arguing with myself, it's time to go back to meet the civilization. <laughs> <laughs> now, for people that are interested in getting to Michinus, first of all, you've got to get to the Faroe Islands. Now, I know that there are ferries to Torshavn. Is that the major town in the islands? Torshavn is the capital. So from the airport, Vagar, yep. you can drive to a subsea tunnel and be in Torshavn within 45 minutes. Michinus is reachable only from the harbour. It's only a five minutes drive from the airport. So you drive down to the harbour in Servabor. And then there is this one boat actually operates from there. It sails uh, once a day, sometimes twice a day. And we also have some rip boat sailing. It's also possible to go by helicopter in summer, uh, three days a week. So, I mean, when we have many day tourists here. Too many, if you ask me. <laughs> What I do is my guests come in in the evening and then they get to, you know, get the sense of being a local and blend in with the locals. So when these crowd of 88 people who came on a day tour with a boat go back, my people come in the evening and we do the hikes. And then they sometimes can be lucky to get a helicopter back the next morning, which is extraordinary experience also. So where do they stay? You said you have a pub there. Is that where people can stay at the pub? The, the locals, it's called. She also has two rooms you can rent. But then uh, I have this guest house called Alon in the Guest House. And the story is, it's from 1895, actually. And when I wanted to start my business here, I mean, what to do? I have no relatives, no house. 
So I asked the one who owned this house, it's been empty for two, seven years, if I could renovate it and use it. So I, I renovated the house, found old furniture from the 50s and started a guest house. But we also have some apartments that have been built now, three apartments you can rent. Then we have some Airbnb, but there's not a lot of possibilities to, to stay for the night. We have a tenting area by the river. So we also have many people bringing their tent and coming to the island. And they have the most amazing view of the river from their tent to the lighthouse. But then again, it's depending on the weather, how nice it will be. You're really looking for intrepid people to go and visit Michiness, aren't you, really? It's not the sort of destination where you're going to stay in a luxury hotel and just sit by the pool all day and go in to the spa area or anything like that, is it? No, you have to accept shared toilet and shower, <laughs> sometimes shared room. Hopefully people know each other. <laughs> I don't put them in the same room unless they're, you know, couples. But yeah. I heard a funny story, actually, about a couple uh, who was in Servauer and the owner didn't know they weren't a couple, so they were like two strangers in the same room and they ended up getting married later <laughs> on in life. So you oh, never know. <laughs> it does sound like an amazing place to go and visit. You've opened up the Michiness Island to us. It's, it sounds like a great destination. And how do people contact you? You've got your own business here. And from the reviews that I've seen, you are an excellent guide. A lot of people that go there love you as well because you really make them feel included in your island home. Yeah, I love having guests and I love this island because in my home, people are guests and they feel like home, like friends or family. And, you know, I relate to them and we keep in contact. What I worry a lot about is protecting the bird life here. So actually, I do not hike to the lighthouse in nesting seasons of the puffin from no. May to August because I want to respect that they need their privacy. I'm very lucky with the guests I come here because they share the love for the birds. And I always say to people, you don't come to Meechness to take a selfie with the lighthouse. You come here because you love the bird i have people to typically couples from totally different countries and i had the first season i had this couple from norway with a couple from thailand actually and the thailanders were very shy but i can tell you the next morning because we are just like a family of four people and me we'd have dinner together when they come have a glass of wine and then we do the evening hike with hot chocolate and experience the puffins and the sunset and in the morning you know they have home baked bread they have eggs from the farmer and actually the next morning the thai uh, lady and the norwegian woman they were in their pajama doing my dishes in the morning so that's how much they loosened up during these you know 15 hours together so it's it's very nice to see how people really loosen up and some become friends and travel together when they leave the island and also because i am a, a local guide and i know all the pharaohs before i, I started this business i just traveled my own country every weekend so i also give my guests the extra service of uh, recommending them what else to see away from the crowd mm. which is what i prefer away from the crowd just you and the nature so yeah and i'm glad to hear i'm having good reviews <laughs> <laughs> one last question because it seems to be of a population or permanent population of 16 people the birds and the fact that you don't hunt them and there's no natural predators are the birds fairly friendly? I mean, as far as the fact that they don't seem to be scared of humans. So if visitors get a really good chance to get to view them properly, mm. is that the situation is on Michiness? You see them so up close, especially the puffers. And to, to just to, to let you know, you know, this summer we closed the path to the lighthouse because they changed the bridge to Michiness Homer. This is the fourth bridge they built. Before, I used to be the only one hiking the north edge of, of the village. And the puffins, they flew away very quickly when we came, just me and four people. This summer, most people have walked the same route because they weren't, it wasn't possible to hike to the lighthouse. And I already see that the puffins have changed. They're not as scared anymore. They get used to people. Mm. And because we don't hunt them, they don't feel threatened by oh. us, which is the greatest thing is why they are so tame. But I will remind people to please stay on the path because we see a lot of people hiking on top of the colony to get even closer pictures. It's really not necessary oh. because they are so close. And, you know, puffins dig nests they dig a meter tunnels into the ground so when you step off the path onto the nest you might crush the nest yes. and that will damage the birds so my wish for the island is to bring in local guides and not allow people outside of the village without a very local guide who can tell them how to behave with the puffins and the sheep as well we have a lot of sheep here too you get that experience too and i've even had people who've been to iceland say but here you see them so close they won't just can't believe how close they are so we do selfies with puffins every night because that's how close they are when we hide in the evening. That sounds like a fantastic adventure. I've been speaking to Oda Andreessen from the island of Michinos in the Faroe Islands. 
somewhere in the North Atlantic Ocean. You can find it if you get a plane or a ferry there, but there's not too many other ways of getting to the Faroes. Oda, thank you very much for chatting to us. Thank you very much. And if you want to come to me, you just go to golocal.fo. I think I forgot to tell you that. (laughs) 